Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to share with you a fabulous burger recipe. I've been getting so many requests to share more burger recipes so I figured let's get started. Today we're going to make my cheddar stuffed barbecue burgers. They sound fancy, they taste delightful, but they are incredibly easy to make. I cannot wait to share this recipe with you because I'm guaranteeing that this will be like the best burger at the Burger Bash that you're going to or that you're hosting because they're really, really good. Now let's get started. I'm going to show you what you're going to need to actually make the burger and then I will show you the remaining ingredients as we go on. The first ingredient and the main ingredient, of course, is going to be some ground beef. I prefer using 85-15, 85% lean, 15% fat, I think that's perfect. I've got some shredded extra sharp cheddar. Make sure you shred it yourself. It makes a big difference in how it melts. I've got some barbecue sauce, you could use store bought or homemade, a great homemade one can be found on my website. I've got lots of garlic and I've just grated this over a microplane and then I have got some Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper. That's all you'll need to make the actual burgers. Now these are not going to be like, ooh that's like a really strong barbecue sauce flavor. You can certainly do that by adding more barbecue sauce on top. These are kind of like, you're eating them and you're like, Oh, they're sweet. Oh, they're juicy. Oh, they're delicious. It's kind of like me in a burger. I'm kind of sweet. I'm kind of delicious looking, right? So they're very easy, but they are absolutely divine. Let's get started. It could not be easier, seriously. You're going to take your barbecue sauce and you're going to put that right into your bowl with the ground beef. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I want way more barbecue sauce than that, listen to this one. Don't do it. Follow the recipe because if you put too much barbecue sauce, they won't hold together. They'll get really wet and they'll fall apart. They'll still be delicious, but they won't hold together. My garlic, I like a lot of garlic, so I put in a good three cloves. Worcestershire sauce, a good grating of salt, uh, pepper, and a really good pinch of salt. Now, do not undersalt your burgers. Undersalting meat, to me, is something you can't come back from. So, this is a couple pounds of ground beef, so I'm going to salt this really well because we also have the sweet barbecue sauce, so you want to make sure you salt it right. So, clean hands, cook's best tool, go in there and just mix everything together super well. It smells good already. Now what I have here is a baking sheet. I lined it with a little bit of aluminum foil, but that's really not necessary. And then I just put on a sheet of some plastic wrap because these have to go in the fridge for a bit. So now that you've got everything mixed, and don't over mix it because you don't, you want these to come out really nice and juicy. You don't want to overwork the meat. I'm going to score this in four and then each quarter is going to make two burgers. Now depending on how big you want them, I mean, I'm kind of liking, I like making smaller ones rather than really big burgers, especially because I have smaller buns. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> um, I don't want them to be too, too big because they've got, they are pretty flavorful. So I like making smaller ones rather than bigger ones. But you know what? These will make four smallish burgers or four gigantic or six medium ones. So it's up to you. I made a little divot in my burger patty. As you can see, I put in about a tablespoon of shredded cheese right in the center. And now I'm just going to take, this is really simple, I'm taking the sides as you can see and I'm kind of folding them over so that the cheddar, the cheese stays right in the center. And then you just kind of using your hands in the palm of your hands, you just flatten them right back out into a burger. Now I will say, I don't recommend you make these on the outdoor grill. I prefer you make these on your grill pan or in a cast iron skillet, which is what I'm going to do because they come out fabulous. And um, if they kind of start to crumble a little bit, then you don't have a big mess on your hands. But if you do this on the outdoor grill, chances are you might have a mess on your hands. And what I don't want is for you to add any kind of breading to this, any kind of breadcrumbs, because then it makes them tough and I don't want that. So I'm just going to continue forming my burgers and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. All my burgers are formed, now I'm going to wash my hands, wrap, this wrap them with more plastic wrap and these are going to go in the fridge for around half an hour or so. I want these to set a little bit because we did just work with them a lot and we put barbecue sauce in them. I just want to give them a chance to rest and then we'll get going on making the caramelized onions which are like, it's like a cherry on the sundae but in for like a savory version so it's like the onion on the burger because that's what it is. So I'm going to wash up, pop these in the fridge, and then we'll make the onions. 
Now to make the onions, you'll need a couple of yellow onions. Now I have just sliced them into half moon shapes, but I didn't slice them too, too thin. I still want them to retain their texture and their shape. So I cut them pretty thick, about a quarter inch thick, which is exactly what I'm looking for. You need olive oil, a little bit of butter, and you'll need some beer. I'm using Budweiser because it's got a really light and crisp flavor, and therefore it won't be too heavy. And it'll be just the perfect thing to deglaze my um, onions with. And by the way, this is a fun fact. Did you know that Budweiser is the official beer for the 2014 FIFA World Cup? I know. So you can make these burgers while you're watching the game. And if your team loses, don't go into mourning like my dad did. Enjoy the food and be happy for the another team. For another team. Which, by the way, it's a lot easier said than done because when Italy lost, I cried. But anyway, I've got a large skillet here, and I'm preheating that over about medium-high heat, and when it's there, I'm gonna add my butter and my olive oil, and we're gonna let that kind of melt together before we add our onions. I'm adding a little butter and a little olive oil. I love caramelizing my onions with a little bit of butter. It just gives you a nuttier flavor, but I do do a combination of olive oil and butter because the olive oil has a higher cooking temperature. It won't burn as quickly as butter will. And now I'm gonna add my onions. Very simple. I'm cooking this over relatively high heat because again, I want these to develop some color, but what I don't want is for them to kind of melt. Um, that's, that's not what I want. I want texture, I want shape, so I'm cooking them over relatively higher heat than I normally would. Breaking all the rules is what I do. Cooking these for about, I would say, seven or eight minutes or until they develop a good amount of color. I'm gonna salt and pepper them now. They look gorgeous. They smell phenomenal. Time to deglaze. I'll leave the rest for Joe. Now you want, you can immediately sort of smell all that wonderful flavor from beer and the sweetness from the onions. You just know it's gonna be good by smelling it, by the smell of it. This has to reduce for a couple of minutes. I don't want all that liquid. I want it to really reduce and the flavor gets concentrated. So while that's happening, I'm gonna clean up and then we'll get going on actually getting the burgers cooked. These look great. You can see they've kept their shape. They've kept a little bit of the texture. The beer has reduced and it's now the flavor is concentrated. I'm gonna just put them right back in the same bowl. No raw meat or anything, so it's perfectly fine. I'm gonna let those cool. Now what I'm going to do as those cool, I'm gonna get my oven preheated to 400 because I wanna toast some buns. I'm gonna get my burgers out of the fridge. They need to come to room temperature for about 10 minutes before we cook them. And then we'll pull the whole thing off together. Now we're pretty much ready to pull the whole thing off together. Now I do have my oven preheated to 400 because I wanna get just the buns into the oven to get them toasted. I'm only gonna cook four for today and save the other four for company tomorrow. Multitasking, thinking ahead. Gets you really far in life, really. I'm going to take some melted butter, just melted this in the microwave, and brush it on the cut side of all the buns. Now I'm going to give you a tip, and really it's more of a choice. If you are planning to toast your buns, you're gonna get amazing crunch, buttery flavor, just phenomenal. But it does make eating the burger a bit messy because it's not going to be able to sort of hold on to your burger and the toppings the way uh, it would if you weren't toasting it. So if you wanna make it a little easier on yourself as far as eating the burger, don't toast your buns. However, you're gonna miss out on that gorgeous flavor and texture and if you know me, you know that I will choose flavor over getting dirty any time of day. So, I'm gonna take my butter buns and I'm going to put them cut side down. Just flip them over. And these are only gonna go into your oven for about eight to 10 minutes or until they're lightly golden. And then I also have a large cast iron skillet preheating. You could definitely use a grill pan. I'm getting, I'm getting this preheated over about medium heat, like a notch over medium heat. Not medium high, that's too high. I'm gonna pop these burgers in, um, the buns in, and then we'll get the burgers to the skillet. Oven's ready. Only going to cook four, so I'm gonna like uncover four of them. And I take a fish spatula. This is like an all-purpose spatula. You don't need this just to cook fish because it's amazing. No, nothing in the skillet, literally. I just want it nice and hot. It's gonna give me a beautiful crust. It's gonna cook the burgers beautifully. And these only take, because they're kind of on the smaller side, they'll only take about three, three and a half minutes per side, and they will be perfectly juicy. 
In the meantime, I'm just going to set these aside. What I have here are some toppings. Totally optional. I have to have pickles with mine, dill pickles all the way, sliced tomato, a little bit of iceberg lettuce. And then what I have here is a little mayo, a little teeny tiny bit of ketchup, and I'm going to just season them really lightly with some salt and pepper. I love the ratio of half the amount of ketchup to mayo. I think it's perfect. You don't have to make this. I just love it. So I'm going to just season it lightly. Mix the two together. I've got my onions cooked. I have my veggies cut. I've got my pickles ready. My buns are toasting. We are ready to build ourselves a phenomenal burger. I'm going to let those cook for about three, three and a half minutes per side, and then we'll build ourselves an epic burger. I've got my buttery toasted bun. Now this is how I like to build mine. I built Joe's already. I've got the tomato at the very bottom. That's just how he likes it. This is how I like it. I'm going to put, I'm not even going to go with the tomato on mine. I'm going to do my onions at the very bottom so that they're like the perfect bed. And then I'm going to go with my burger, which is just juicy and gorgeous. And then I'm going to go with a pickle and a little bit of lettuce just to kind of hold it together. That's how I like it. By all means, do you. Cut in half. I'm excited for the center part. You hear that crunch? Look at that. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Because I'm seeing deliciousness. And I'm going to go right in. I feel like I need a bib for this, but it's totally worth it, trust me. Mm. There are no words. It is so juicy. Mm. Those onions are money. And the thing is, it's not an overwhelming amount of barbecue sauce that overtakes everything else. It's just like a perfect blend of slightly sweet, the onions, the pickle, everything is like a match made in food heaven. The full recipe will be on LaraInTheKitchen.com waiting for you. If you do recreate this, don't forget I want to see the picture. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. Go make this one. You'll be a rock star. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.